Welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'll be covering an updated installation and configuration guide for Cyberlab, Megatron, Death to Pixels, 4K HDR, Shader Preset Pack. Just a few notes to begin with. For this video, you'll need a 4K HDR TV or monitor. The preset pack and its associated shaders are actually very lightweight, so you don't need an overly powerful PC or GPU. Even an integrated GPU should do the trick, as long as it supports Vulkan. We're more interested in the overall brightness of your HDR display. Major Pain the Cactus, the creator of the Megatron shader, recommends that your display supports at least display HDR 600, but something like Display HDR 1000 would be even better. Personally, my display supports about half that and it still looks good. And before you ask, the Raspberry Pi 4 should support this shader preset pack. Before we continue, we just need to do some preparation work. Firstly, you need to make sure that you have the latest version of RetroArch installed. If you need help with this, there should be a link to a RetroArch beginner's guide in the description. Next, we need to download Cyberlabs pack. So go to Cyberlabs homepage, which is linked in the description. And once you're here, go down until you get to this section here. And here we can see Cyberlab Megatron Death to Pixels 4K HDR. And there should be a link just beneath it. And open this in a new tab, and then click the big green download button. And go back. And we also need to download CRT Guest Advanced NTSC, which Cyberlab has detailed here. And if you go to this blue link beneath it, and open it in a new tab, and then click the download link. And again, hit the big green download button. And once you've downloaded both of those files, you need to open the folder where they're stored. Now on the left hand side, you can see the two files we've downloaded, and on the right hand side is our RetroArch installation. So firstly, let's unzip the two files we downloaded. And now we can delete the zip files. Firstly, let's install Cyberlabs presets. So open the Cyberlab folder, and open the RetroArch folder. And now all you need to do is move this shaders folder into your RetroArch folder. And if you've previously installed these presets, it may ask you to replace those. And if we go into your shaders folder in RetroArch, you should see that all the Cyberlab presets have been copied across. And now we can delete the Cyberlab folder. Now we need to install the CRT Guest Advanced Shader. So open the folder and in your RetroArch folder, go into Shaders, Shader Slang, and CRT, and you should see 92 files here. Now what we want to do is move these six files over to this folder and it'll ask you to replace 55 files and hit yes. And that's the installation process complete. Now before we get onto the configuration process, we need to find the peak luminance value for your TV or monitor. If you have a monitor or TV that's a popular model or from a reputable brand, go to artings.com and in the search box, type in your TV's model number and hopefully they would have done a review of your display. And then what you want to do is on the review page, scroll part way down until you get to this section here where it says HDR peak brightness. And then you'll see one line that says HDR real scene peak brightness or something similar. And this is the number we're interested in. So for this particular model, it says 624. Just write that down on a piece of paper or on your phone as we'll need it later on. Now, if artings.com or ratings.com, sorry, I don't know how it's pronounced, doesn't have your TV or monitor reviewed, that's okay. The next stop maybe should be either going to Google and typing in your model number and hopefully somebody else has reviewed it, or alternatively, you could go to the manufacturer's website. So for example, this is BenQ's homepage and I've plugged in a random TV here and you can see that the peak brightness HDR for this model is 350. Now, if you simply can't find your peak brightness anywhere at all on the internet, don't worry about it. It's totally fine. Just do your best to find it or just skip this step entirely. Now, open RetroArch. Excellent. So once you have RetroArch open, you need to go to settings and then go to video, output, and then video driver. And the video driver we're interested in is Vulkan. D3D and GL Core are also supported. However, I've not tried or tested any of those, so both of those will be out of scope for this video. We'll purely be focusing on Vulkan. Once you've selected Vulkan, you need to restart RetroArch. Now, for some users, you may encounter an issue where when you try to restart RetroArch, 
RetroArch will refuse to load. If you do encounter this issue, please refer to the Vulcan Fix video I've left in the description below. For everybody else, restart RetroArch now. Once you've restarted RetroArch, go back to Settings, go down to Video, and then HDR. And on this screen, you want to enable HDR. Now you should notice that the screen might flicker for a brief moment, and suddenly all the text on the screen should appear a lot brighter. However, if any of you experience that everything's just gone black and you can't see anything anymore, no problem, just hit the escape button twice and reopen RetroArch. And if that doesn't work, just restart your computer and then open RetroArch again, and it should be fine. Now, if you're using D3D or GL Core as your video drivers, you may possibly need to enable HDR manually within Windows. But if you're using Vulkan, you shouldn't need to do that. Now, we just need to load up a game. For this video, I'll be using the 240p test suite. I'll leave a link to it in the description if you want to download it for yourself. Once you've loaded 240p test suite or your game, press F1 to go to the quick menu and go to shaders, load, and then select one of the Cyberlab Megatron 4K HDR presets. So as I've got the Super Nintendo version of 240p test suite, I'm going to be using a Super Nintendo preset. And then press F1 to return to the game. And there we go, the preset has successfully loaded. So whilst you're watching this video, there is a slim chance that the image might not look so great with the shader preset. And I think that has something to do with the way YouTube compresses the image or something, but in real life, on my side, the image looks totally fine. And hopefully it should look good in practice on your side too. Now press F1 and go back to the shader screen, and then what we want to do is go down to shader parameters. And then you'll see a bunch of settings and numbers here. So go down until you get to this section here where it says your displays settings, and then go down again and again and again until you get to displays peak luminance. Now press enter here. So do you remember earlier when I asked you to find your displays peak luminance value or peak brightness value? So if you did manage to find that, you need to select the closest number to that value from this menu here. So for example, if the value of your display was 663, maybe select 660 as that's the closest value. But for those of you that could not find your peak luminance value, it's probably best you don't modify anything at this stage. And then just press backspace to return to the shader parameters menu. Oh, and before I forget, one other thing I should mention is on your Windows computer, if you do have something like night light enabled, that functionality which um, warms your screen temperature as the sun begins to set, do disable that if you can, because in my experience, that does mess around with the colors here. Right, so the next thing we want to define is your display's paper white luminance. So press F1 to return to the 240p test suite, go to test patterns and go to gray ramp. Now press F1 to go back to the shader parameters menu. Now go all the way back until we get back to the main RetroArch screen. Go to settings, user interface, appearance, color theme alpha factor, and press enter and then change this to zero. And press enter. Now you should notice that the menu background has vanished and that's what we want. So go all the way back to the RetroArch menu, go to Quick Menu, go down to Shaders, and Shader Parameters. And go back down to the paper white value that we saw earlier. There we go. I know it's a little bit difficult to see, but just uh, do your best. So right now, on Display's Paper White Luminance, we want to adjust this number so we can kind of brighten and darken the screen. But the main aim is we want to make sure that the whites on the test pattern behind aren't blown out and we want to make sure that the blacks aren't crushed. So what you can do is just use the left and right arrows on your keyboard to adjust this. So if you keep hold of left, you'll notice that the pattern in the background begins to darken and if you keep hold of right, you get the opposite effect. So just adjust this until you can see every sample of the black and white in the background. And just bear in mind, because everybody's monitor is different, and especially HDR monitors, they're all very different from each other, our numbers could be drastically different. And finally, go down to Displays Subpixel Layout. 
Now here we can choose from three options. So if we press enter on it, we have zero, one, and two. Let's go back. Now this determines the subpixel layout. So the order in which the colored pixels are laid out. So we have RGB, RWBG, or BGR. So R being red, G being green, and B being blue. So let's try a different test pattern. So press F1, and within 240p test suite, go back. Let's try a different pattern. So I'm going to try color bars and press F1. Hopefully you'll be able to find the subpixel layout of your TV or monitor. But if you don't know what it is, what I recommend you do is put your face right up against the screen and cycle through each one of these. And you'll notice that the red, green, and blue phosphors should jump around. And ideally we just want a nice triad shape and even spacing. So just pick the one that looks best to you. I'll leave a link in the description to some different subpixel layouts and hopefully you can find the one that looks best to you. So now we've spent all this time making all these changes within this shader preset, I think it'd be a good idea to save our changes. So go back, go up to save and press enter. And where it says simple presets, we want to make sure that is enabled. So make sure you switch this on and then go down to save shade preset as, press enter, and then just give it a name that you'll remember. So I'm going to call mine Cyberlab Megatron Super Nintendo HDR, and then press enter. And then next time you load up RetroArch in future, if you want to load that preset, all you need to do is go back and go to load. And if you go to shaders, and in the main shaders directory, if you go all the way down, you'll see it there, and then you can just press enter to confirm it. If you've made it this far into the video without being confused, well done you. And for the rest of you, if there is anything that is unclear, just drop a comment in the comment section. And hopefully if Cyberlab is around, he'll be able to answer your question. Uh, alternatively, for those of you that fully understood the process, it would be awesome if you guys could also do your best to, uh, to help out those in need too. Anyway, this has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.